Jamshid never went to university. Instead, his computer skills landed him his well-paid job in an internet service provider. His company is trying to bring down the price of the internet for Afghan consumers, and he blames government greed for the high prices here. The Ministry of Communication is the one who is issuing the licenses for ISPs. The first thing, if they want to help internet grow into everyone's life in Afghanistan, first they have to just decrease the prices, they have to lower the prices of the licenses. Is it really trying to uh, help the uh, business grow or they're only thinking about their own money? The Afghan government say they are not making a profit from the Internet and that their long-term aim is to try and make access affordable for everyone. But they are having to build the country's land-based infrastructure from scratch and until this is finished, they admit costs will remain high. What happens is to give people internet services during uh, today or uh, in the past, uh, we have to depend on the satellite, using satellite. And uh, satellite bandwidth is very expens expensive. And due to that, uh, the internet services are generally expensive. We have to uh, invest in uh, ground-based infrastructure. And this is uh, uh, systems like uh, optical fiber network. Mm, the optical fiber network will connect uh, most of our uh, uh, large cities in Afghanistan. And at the same time, it will connect Afghanistan with all the neighboring uh, countries. But there are many in the Muslim world who have a problem with the very concept of the Internet. They see it as an American invention a tool of Western cultural imperialism full of immoral and an Islamic content. Indeed, during the Taliban era, the Internet was completely banned. And even now, many Afghans remain deeply suspicious of foreign influences. We visited the Central Mosque. By coincidence, that day's sermon was a vitriolic attack on the foreign media. The Imam said, today we can see how foreign culture is penetrating every house in Afghanistan. The West wants to corrupt our people and take us away from our God, our culture and our humanity. We were starting to attract unwanted attention and were advised to leave. But not all Islamic thinking is as conservative. The Sadiqiyya Madrasa is just around the corner. Here, computer use is not just tolerated. It's encouraged as the best tool for researching hard to obtain Islamic texts. The internet is like entering a garden where there is every kind of fruit. Some will taste bad and won't agree with us. And there are even thorns to hurt us. So it is up to us to work out which fruit to choose and which ones not to. The Internet is exactly the same. Why then were the Taliban so opposed to the Internet? They were against everything that brought us knowledge, including the Internet. They had their own agenda. They wanted to keep people ignorant so that you'd accept whatever they said. Bamiyan, in the central highlands. This beautiful district is usually associated with the destruction of the famous Buddha statues by the Taliban back in 2001. Most of the locals are ethnic Hazara, descendants of the Mongols and Shia Muslims. They have long been the underclass in this country. What is less well known is that proportionally to the size of its population, Bamiyan is a thriving hub of Afghanistan's nascent blogging community. 
My hosts here were Mehdi Mehrain and his wife Batul. Both are bloggers and both use the Internet for the work as human rights monitors. But the Internet played an important role in their personal lives too. When they were courting, they were studying in different countries and it helped them keep their relationship alive. Now they are married with a newborn baby. Her internet bill ended up costing more than her university bill. <laughs> it is not accepted for unmarried people to talk to each other in Afghanistan. You were not engaged, so how did you do that? Mm. Well, it certainly was a break with tradition. We couldn't tell anyone about our relationship really, but Batul's family are very open-minded. She was teased and warned gently occasionally to be careful. But after all, who could be better than me? <laughs> Batul works at a human rights organization where she uses the internet to compose and file reports on the situation in Bamiyan province. But she also writes a blog aimed at introducing the reality of life here to a wider world. When I'm in the bazaar, I notice the children most, and the women. They're rarely seen in public, and if they are seen, they're wearing the full worker. The difficulties facing people living here aren't talked about much in the media. I have friends in Australia, South Korea, Iran, and the US, and they read my blog as soon as I publish it. Beautiful though, Bamiyan is. This province is also very poor. Mehdi took me to visit the caves carved into the cliffs on one side of the Bamiyan Valley. Once Buddhist monks lived here. And now the caves are full again. This time, the residents are penniless internal refugees from Afghanistan's seemingly endless war. Halima has seven children, but her husband, the family's main breadwinner, was killed by the Taliban. She's typical of those Mehdi and Batul are trying to help. But what does the internet mean to her? Internet. I am illiterate. It is worse than being blind. You can take an illiterate person and shove them in a cave, and they can't say anything about it. I have heard of people working with computers, but I am illiterate, and I don't know anything. We have not received any help from the government. Although Halima only lives a couple of miles away from Mehdi and Batul's house, hers is another world. For many years, the Hazara were forbidden from education. But now these people have made self-improvement through learning a priority. In Bamiyan, educated Hazara like Mehdi see the internet as a tool for empowering their whole community. There are many people who doesn't have access to the internet and even many big population that they never know what is internet and they, have, they haven't seen even the computer. Electricity is another major problem of the uh, uh, majority of the people of Bamiyan, but uh, you know, we, we, we can now solve all the problems in one night. It is going on step by step. We are hopeful to, to, to see one day that those children have access to electricity, internet, and also real life. We drove back to Bamiyan town, past the ruins of the old bazaar. The Taliban had destroyed much of this area as a deliberate attack on the culture of the Hazara. But times have changed. <laughs> Mehdi took me to his local net cafe to meet Muhammad Nazari, one of the original Hazara bloggers of Bamiyan. So what does he want for the area? What I want, not just for Bamiyan, but for all the Hazara, is to improve in all areas, especially the Internet, and for it to become a tool to help us to become part of the world, 
And tomorrow, for Bamiyan, it's to take its place in the world and make all sorts of improvements. Afghanistan is not only landlocked, but seems somehow psychologically isolated from the rest of the world. The legacy of 30 years of fighting. But I kept hearing how the Internet could help this country rejoin the community of nations. Afghanistan's countryside is littered with places like this. So-called tank graveyards, where discarded weaponry slowly rusts away. The Internet is a powerful force, but can it really help to heal the scars left by 30 years of brutal war and political extremism? One of the biggest factors for growing up, for improving, is Internet. Because Internet connects Afghan people to other world. It's a big world. We should use, we should be in this world to meet other people, to make, improve our country. Development is not only reconstruction or construction works. Many things should develop. Uh, we have to be uh, more in communication with others. We have to know the world. The world should know us. Most of the foreign technology in Afghanistan has been designed for killing. But the Internet is one invention that this country can't afford to ignore. Afghanistan needs to seize this chance to join the Internet era. Failure to do so could leave this country stuck in the darkness, from which it has only recently begun to emerge.